troopers. Locked and loaded, sir. Alley vipers. Ready. Bats. Awaiting orders. You can't possibly beat us now. We have the numbers. That's entirely possible. But we have a snake eyes. Shit. We've also got spirit. You've got spirit? Yes, we do. I think Duke's watched Avengers one too many times. Maybe bring it on. I love that movie. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series Cobra Officer, Spirit Iron Knife, and Storm Shadow. Oh, and extra special thanks to Dorkside Toys for shipping these out to me. I hadn't seen any other stores getting these yet, and... <laughs> I didn't expect these for a while, actually. And, oh man, I'm so happy to get some new G.I. Joe characters. Well, okay, two of them we have in some form or fashion. But getting Spirit... Oh, another Joe? Mm. Looking at the package, it's what we're used to with this series. Big window showing you what you got. Some reds for the Cobras, some blues for the Joes. Unique artwork by individual artists for each character. On the side, you get a bigger vert. Well, actually, that artwork extends around and it looks a little bit different. But more Storm Shadow, more Cobra Officer, more Spirit. On the back, they changed up the artwork. Here's the artwork we've been looking at for several years now. It's a definite change, but same flavor. You know what I mean? Same feel. And yes, the bat. I shot this review yesterday. Got these in the mail today, so we're, we're jumping ahead. This will be next week. On the other side, the classified take on the old file card system. Except you have to actually log on to the site and decipher it yourself. Which is kind of fun, but at the same time, they don't have all the bios on the site. There's no spirit and there's no Cobra Officer. For Storm Shadow, it's Covert Ops 4, Bladed Weapons 3, Infiltration 3, and then Ninjutsu 4. For Spirit, it's Recon 4, Light Weapons 3, Stealth 3, and Animal Handling 4. For the Cobra Officer, there's some weirdness going on. It's Leader 1, Light Weapons, Rank 1. Then this one, it's Oddball. It's almost two graphics overlaid each other. I don't know if it's a mix of the two, but it's Infiltration Rank 1, along with Hand to hand combat rank one and then finally listen all of y'all it's a sabotage rank one on the top some logos some windows some numbers on the bottom legalese barcodes but let's go ahead with the cobra officer it's the least surprising but there is some new parts here oh two pieces of tape on bottom who knows is that a han blaster okay back up now that i have this out and in hand uh, there's more new than I thought. If you remember, we got the first Cobra Trooper, and it was awesome. You know, we needed some troops for the shelf to fight G.I. Joe. Then they came out with another one that was essentially the same trooper, but with updated paint apps. A ladder blue, some grays thrown in, and then some photo reel to the eyes. They changed up the skin tone, so it looks like two different dudes standing here. And now they're releasing this one, which does not look out of place when you stand him next to the other dudes, but the change is made, it definitely sets him apart a bit, you know, for the officer role. Well, the base body itself, the upper arms, the shoulders, and the legs down to the boot are all the same. The boots are very similar, like they came from the same Cobra manufacturer, but there are some differences, like this strap coming over with the buckle that is painted. Thank you, Hasbro. The torso overlay is definitely different. There's less there, but it serves the same purpose. It's still holding things. It still has pouches and, and other pouches and more pouches. And I like how they randomly painted this one gray just to throw some asymmetry in there. And in the package, it was down like this. So I thought, oh, the straps come over, down, attached to the belt. That's going to get in the way. But nope, that's actually separated. So you can use torso articulation, which you couldn't do with the first one and a lot of other Joes, which people point out if an actual person was wearing gear like this, you wouldn't be able to crunch either. So I, I get it, but boy, this is fun. The belt also seems to be new. It comes around to a holster with a very leather-like texture on it. Back here to... A, a pouch and a holster for something else. We'll get to that. And then the gear up on the torso has all kinds of little strappy details. Works right into the Silver Cobra logo and a rank insignia and these things around the collar up here, which the other trooper does not have. So, new torso too. Not only that, the head, while very similar, is changed up. On the new officer, it's got that old classic cartoon feel with just a cloth covering over the mouth. Keeps some of the sculpted detail up on top, but it's not the same because it's missing this seam line running over the top. And then instead of this coming down to a point right at the bridge, this one goes straight across. So it looks like a different person. It changes up the facial features a bit. Also different forearms. It makes it look like a officer's glove up to the top instead of a piece of armor. Then they added a knife sheath to the left leg. And there's this officer thing around the left bicep, which is 
I think reuse with just a different deco on it. One of the things we sometimes run into with the G.I. Joe line are the hips. They're sticky. They're tight on the ball, so sometimes when you go to rotate the leg, it feels like the peg twisting. And the peg is small in order to keep a drop down leg. So sometimes I'm against that whole setup. Here, smooth, right out of the package. I did not have to oil it up. I didn't have to loosen it up. Tight, but not too tight. Speaking of articulation, there is a hinge at the top of the neck with a ball going up into the head with a ball down at the bottom of the neck. Can look up that far. Looks down. Not as much tilt as we're used to. Swivels. Butterfly joint goes back, goes forward. Pin on the outside of that rotates all the way around. Hinge at the shoulder comes up. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow. Swivel at the wrist in and out hinge on the right and i'm guessing this is going to be up and down over here yep still left-handed hinge at the mid torso look at that and a ball joint at the waist gives you a little bit more crunch a little bit more art back slight tilt slight tilt drop down leg with the ball at the hip comes forward goes back out nice swivel at the thigh double knee not a problem kicks his own cobra ass rotation at the boot hinge at the ankle goes back forward forward facing pin for rocker for accessories comes with his helmet and this is stripped down a bit. It doesn't have that detail going around the back, but then there's some kind of rank insignia on the front. Goes down over the head beautifully, nice and tight, isn't falling off. There's this new knife. It's got some funky shape to the blade. I wouldn't want to be stabbed with this thing. I don't want to be stabbed with any knife, but you get where I'm going with that. Tight grip in the hand, not going to fall out. I will probably keep it down here in the sheath. Does it go all the way? Yep, there you go. The big gripe about early G.I. Joe figures in the classified line was space weapons. But even though I'm calling this a Star Wars gun, it still has a bit of realism to it because, yes, I know the Star Wars gun was based on an actual realistic gun. I get it. I get it. Push and twist. There's also a holster at the waist, and the way it's angled kind of kicks into the torso. You gotta get around it. Try to get it there. Kind of gets in the way, but not much. It's gonna flex out a bit. There's this submachine gun, this mid size rifle of some kind. Pretty plain, but it seems very Cobra Trooper standard. And it also has this that plugs into the side of it. Then there's this rifle, which again, strays away from the early classified series space theme. Just a realistic feel to it. I think this is a light of some kind. At first I thought it was a scope, but it fits down onto the side. There's a step in the peg right here and that corresponds down inside the peg hole. And it is tight as hell, which is annoying to me only because it's a small little piece, but at the same time, I prefer it being tight so that if it falls or something, it's not just gonna be easy carpet monster fodder. And then there's another one of these specifically for this, so you have two, you don't have to share the ammo. At first I thought, why the hell would they make this separate? Why didn't they just mold it on there? It would have saved some frustration, but then I found this. Well, I didn't find it. It was in the package. It wasn't that hard to find. And with that on there, it doesn't fit. So you have to take that off in order to get that down to there. In fact, does that come off and go any further? Eh, no, you can leave that on if you want. Then the attachment piece, which I still think is a light, goes down into there so you can store it on his back. It also has a place for the ammo in case you don't want to leave it loaded on his back, but... I can't seem to get that to go down in there. Oh, am I trying to put it in upside down? There it goes. It snaps in there, but again, it's so close to the torso, you move around too much, it's going to prove me a liar. It stays there. Then you line up the hole and plug that in. So everything that comes in the package is storable on the body. I love it when a plan comes together. And then let's crack open Storm Shadow because, well, while we have a version of Storm Shadow already, I think... Some people were waiting for this version. It really goes back to its classic roots. And look, it's a storm shadow that's bright white. And looking at it, I think this is all new sculpt. They almost had to in order to make him this old school looking. I thought maybe the head would be reuse, but it's not. It doesn't have quite as much detail on the mask. At the same time, it seems to have the same eyebrows, like it's the same guy. Just look at how clean this is though. I'm gonna say classic about 46 times in the next 10 minutes, so bear with me. The baggy type pants have nice wrinkles, then they bunch up above the wraps around the lower leg. The ninja toes with a seam line, a black sole on bottom, have a pad of some kind on the back of the hand working around to two exposed fingers, three under the glove. Is it the same on this side? Oh, no. More wraps at the forearm, but then there's straps going around to pads on the back for backhands. The gi on the torso, same thing as the rest. It has some wrinkles to it. It has this 
seam running diagonally up here. Very clean on the back, almost nothing. Has a couple of back pockets. Well, no, that's not even back pockets. That's just seam lines. I'm missing pouches. Why are you supposed to have pouches? Cobra logo hiding under this strap, which is a complete separate piece. We'll play with that in a minute. But that has some leather detail to it, a silver buckle, some shuriken, and then comes back and over to plainness. Well, it overlaps itself right there, but man, it's classic-y. They work the ripped off sleeves perfectly into the butterfly joint. That way it's a separate piece, but it doesn't get in the way at all. And the ripped off sleeves are the invitation to the gun show. He's just got some muscled arms. There's no tattoos. It's just plain skin tone, but it totally works, especially against the whiteness of the rest of the costume, which works right into the skin tone at the exposed eyes. That's covered under a mask that just has a couple of seams running here and down here to there. The cool thing about this being a completely new sculpt, it was all specifically for this. I mean, the rest of the line where there's reuse and they change parts and pieces, you can pick them out if you get really close and nitpicky with it, but everything still seems uniform. Here, everything's meant to work together. Oops, I forgot to point out the belt itself because that's a separate piece too, but it has a little white cloth sculpted to it hanging under to make it look like the top is actually a shirt that's untucked under the belt. It's a bit jarring if you push it too far down and then you can see the pants, so you gotta kinda leave it at that exact point hiding the waist articulation. There's one pouch and something else and then a peg. Fairly simple, fairly classic. And again, I did not have a problem. I didn't have to oil it up, but there is a snap to it, more snappy. I'm sure that'll go away the more I work them in. And then they also changed up at the head because it is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Most of the ones I've messed with in the past 24 hours have a hinge there. I was going to say maybe it's to pop the head off easier, but I just looked at the bat and it has a swappable head, but the old hinge with the big ball. With that, you can take this piece off. And I think that's cool. It, it's a nice look. It adds something to the overall thing, but it does flop around. So I will probably run him like this. Even then, if you want to do this, you can take the bandolier off too and get even cleaner. And what do we say about cleaner? More classic. That gives me an excuse to go over articulation. Like I just showed, there's a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. There's a ball down at the bottom. Looks up, down, Ooh, side to side. Butterfly joint moves forward and back. Swivel out there goes around. You do have to kick out for the top there because it's pointy. Hinge at the shoulder goes up. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes up to there. Swivel at the wrist. Hinge. Oh, up and down. They made Storm Shadow right-handed. Oh, well, I say that. The left is up and down, too. Uninhibited torso crunch. The ball at the waist that gives you just a little bit more. Arc back. A little bit of tilt. Drop down leg with a ball at the hip. Comes forward. Goes back. Side kick all the way. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh, there's some bagginess right there. Gets in the way slightly, but hopping. Rotation at the top of the wraps. Ninja ankle back. Ninja ankle forward. Forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, like I showed, there is an up hood. Because of the articulated eye Icons, I know there's a temptation to do this and put it like that. That's wrong. That's actually the neck hole, which means you go like this and then pop the head back on. And wow, that's actually not as fishbowly as I thought it'd be. That's okay, but not my favorite. Get the head back out of the hood. Come here. Comes with this, which took me a second to realize where it actually goes. There's a socket right there. Pops onto this ball joint on the back of the belt piece. There's no in and out. It simply rotates. Still works though. Adds a little flare. There's this bow and okay. I don't know a lot about weapons. I know less about bows, but it looks very complicated. Because his right hand it looks like it's meant to hold the arrow, I'm guessing he's right-handed. Hands are a little bit softer than some of the other classifieds, so it spreads open, get it in there, and he can grip it. So of course with the bow, you gotta have an arrow. Fairly simple. Now there is a notch on the side of the bow that does most of the arrow holding, and because it doesn't actually draw you're kind of in a neutral position. That's not terrible at all. Comes with two swords, different links to the blade, silver paint on the end, but check out the grips. That's crazy cool. And of course it's G.I. Joe, gotta have something to pin into the back. Here's the quiver with the Arashikage symbol and then two sheaths. That's all attached together this time around. Then there's also a peg and a corresponding hole in the bow. There's also a slot right there behind this bunch of arrows that is sculpted into the quiver and let's see if I can, there we go. Slips right down in there and there's almost a lock at the end where it's not just gonna slip out and it's barely noticeable back there. It looks like it's part of the group. Takes a little bit of pushing, but once you get it on there, that's a lot of gear on his back though. Probably makes him 
And then finally, let's open up Spirit because, damn it, I'm excited to add to the Joe team. Oh, look at that. I was gonna comment on the other trays, how they're empty here. This one's actually hiding eagle wings behind here. And look how packed this tray is. You know what? This lives up to expectations. Look at this thing. Just like everything else we've looked at, fits right in with the rest of the line. The style, the aesthetic, the overall look of the clothing and uniform. And I was expecting reuse of Duke, and that is the case, but not as much as I thought. Same crotch, same upper legs, same upper lower legs, and that's it, even though it doesn't look like that's it. The boots, very, 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 very similar, but you can see there's a difference to the sole, and then the top is re-sculpted to not have a kick pad. There's even slight details to the foot itself. And while the shirts look the same, there are some sculptural differences. The wrinkles around the pockets and the buttons and the collar don't match up. There's an extra seam line on Spirit right here that's not on Duke. Duke has a thick overlay on the front of the pocket. Spirit only has like a narrow seam. Duke has an undershirt that actually has a collar sculpted on and Spirit doesn't. It's red and meant to be an undershirt, but it's more like like flints. But the biggest duke tail is this metal right here. Spirit doesn't have that. And that's along with new arms because the sleeve comes down to the bicep instead of all the way down to the forearm. Gold band around the wrist, reused hands. <laughs> We've seen these hands so many times at this point. On the left side, he's got this padding around the forearm, which is to keep from getting stabbed by claws. Have the holster, that's a complete separate piece. If you wanted to, you could pull this all the way down off the leg. On the left, there is a knife holster. New belt piece that's doubled up has this nice bar right here, some pouch and some ammo and another pouch that's attached to the strap coming up and over the shoulder. Another knife sheath, some grenades, and then a Joe Pro. There's nice tampos to the shoulders with this and then a rank of some kind. Up at the head, it's unmistakably spirit. Have the headband going around, the hair coming down to braids, and when I saw this in the package I thought those are getting in the way. They're actually soft and not really. You still get all the head movement. Comes around, there's a tie on the back. He has his right ear. The hair is pulled behind it with the braid coming down. On this side, it's covered up and there's some hair coming up over the bandana. It just makes for a cool effect. A, a natural feel. Just tough. Very serious. Very stern. And completes the look. I mean, yeah, it's a guy in a blue shirt and some khaki top pants. But you see this on the shelf and hey, that's spirit. Unfortunately, Duke is the biggest offender when it comes to the white stress marks on the hip pegs. The ball is just too tight and here I'm getting I'm getting some kickback, so I'm going to have to oil the joint. In fact, I can already see some stress right there. I'm going to break out the clear non-staining lubricant and just add a drop. You also don't want to go straight into cranking forward and back. You want to go side to side, kind of work it around the ball first and then bring it forward and loosen that up. Now I can feel the snap coming forward. In and out and then forward. Yeah, there we go. That's just a common thing in this line. It's almost second nature to pull it out and check the hips. Going over articulation, there is a, well, there's a dumbbell joint up here too. Then a ball down at the bottom all together. Can look up, down, some tilt, side to side. Butterfly joint goes back, forward, swivels all the way around, hinges out. Rotation at the bicep. Double elbow, I'm guessing the cuff of the shirt's gonna get in the way a bit, but still nice range. Swivel at the wrist and then in and out, hinge on the right, up and down on the left. Hinge mid torso, kicks forward, forward, kicks forward, and then the ball joint at the waist goes forward just a little bit more. Arcs back, some tilt. Again, drop down joint to the leg, ball at the hip comes forward, goes back, out, oh yeah, cut at the thigh, double knee comes up to, bam. Rotation at the boot, hinge at the ankle goes back, front, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, comes with this fairly simple knife, cast all in black, nice grip, but which sheath does it go in? I'm gonna put it here and see what happens. Because there's also this knife with a silver ornate detail to it, and I think some kind of skull that goes here. Comes with this pistol, and it's not until I started looking into the camera that there's a wing sculpt to it. Goes down in there. Oh, nice. And the rifle doesn't look like a space weapon either. Again, with the realism, the big scope. Does this come? Oh, it does. Great grip on the gun too. And even though he has the left hand set up, he can still aim fairly well. And then there is the pack that plugs into the back, which we commonly call a backpack. Have some hard cases, look like they latch right here, and then some soft pouches underneath. There's a peg on this side 
that you can put through the trigger guard here and the rifle hangs off. And then there's a perch with two peg holes, which is obviously for freedom. And this is a nicer sculpt than I expected. You can see the individual feather sculpt working down to the tail, all flared out up to the head with the beak and the eyes and, oh, some articulation. Look at that. There's also a swivel at the hip or whatever it's called on a bird. You can put the leg forward and back. Then there's also a swivel at the foot. And of course there's pegs on the feet that you can plug into here. And look at that. <laughs> you can bring it down a little bit. That's going to stand out in a display. But remember, we also talked about the pegs on the forearm. The angle of the peg and the peg holes being on the back of the forearm like it is, you do have to angle freedom well, out and in to make it not look awkward. Because if you try to get them standing straight up like this, Spirit's arm just looks like he's out of joint or something trying to get it up there. Thankfully, the pegs are tight. It's not just gonna fall off. It adds some awkward weight to the overall stance, but like backpacks and stuff, you just have to counteract it. But I forgot to mention that there's also a ball joint at the wing, so you can bring that back or forward or wherever you want and pop them off because there's also alternate spread out wings. R on that ball, and I'm guessing there's an L on this one. Yeah, right there. You can put freedom in flight and and again, that looks great. And that's even more, hey, look at me. I am standing among all your G.I. Joes. Size-wise, fairly consistent between the three. The Cobra Officer is about six and three sixteenths. Spirit is actually about the same. And then Storm Shadow is six and an eight maybe a 16 somewhere in there which means spirit looks fantastic with the joes he fits right in with the rest of them even when they're smaller like scarlet or larger like roadblock that does put storm shadow slightly smaller than both cobra commander and destro which i'm okay with because it fits in with the other classified storm shadow but is slightly smaller than the movie version oh the white looks better than the cream and the heavy cream and then the cobra officer is going to look right at home commanding the rest of the troopers or joining forces with the rest of the troops and just wage war. So at the end of the day, hot dog. I love adding to my G.I. Joe collection. It's been a bit. Well, okay. I did review the bat and the alley viper yesterday and I'm still in the midst of editing that. But those along with these, oh man, it's been a good week. Getting another trooper to add to that group. Oh man, I love it. I wasn't planning on building a big, huge army of them, but having one with individual looks, an officer that slightly stands out oh yeah i'm not complaining storm shadow in full on classic look where we expected you know the tattoos or the mortal Kombat type mask or some armor pieces here and there it, it's a swerve but it's a nice swerve because i can say all those same things about spirit he just oh man exudes 80s but at the same time a nice updated aesthetic freedom's a little awkward to work with especially when you're trying to put him on spirit somewhere but Again, it's almost another character. You're adding two to the shelf for the price of one. So yeah, like I said, good week, good figures, good display, good collection. I, I can't remember if I said it during this one or yesterday's review. The G.I. Joe team turned it around so fast. They were target, oh no, all these design choices and these colors and ch -ch -ch. And then it seemed like one live stream went straight up and now it's quickly become my favorite line again. Star Wars is still my bread and butter, but this is my toast and jam. This is, uh, yeah, I, I can't help but love whenever I get to add to either Cobra or the Joes. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the whoosh. Yeah, if they can keep up this kind of quality, especially with the hips, I'm down. Don't change a thing. Keep it going. But when reused parts do allow the QC issues to creep back in, it's a bit disheartening. But at the same time, it's an easy fix. I just worry that I'm going to come back to it in several months and maybe the oil has dissipated or something and I'm going to snap something off. But I'm not worried about it right now. I'm on a figure high.